Hi, I'm Lillian Muli. I'm a mother of two. I'm also a news anchor at Citizen TV, that's Royal Media Services. I'm also a content producer and a lover of life. I'm at the Karen Country Lodge and you're watching The Other Side of Me. My favorite movie is The Notebook and it's because I'm a hopeless romantic and I love love stories and it's a story about this young couple that overcomes obstacles, overcomes all the challenges that come their way um, and it, the background is just beautiful, you know, where the setting where they have this beautiful lake, it's green, it's scenic and it's a story about this um, I wouldn't call him poor, but he doesn't come from the same social class as this girl. His name is Noah, the girl's name is Ali, and anyone who's watched The Notebook knows that it's just the most beautiful love story that was ever told. I've watched it like I think, I think almost 15 times. I love Bongo, and I love Bongo because again, I love love and I love the love stories in Bongo. My favorite artist is Diamond, but then basically the Wasafi stable itself. Um, yeah, it gives me goosebumps because they sing from the heart. I think there's just something about Tanzanians. They're scribes, they're romantic, they, um, they put, their content is very rich, especially musically. The moment in my life that I would love to relieve over and over again would be the birth of my children, my sons. Um, each, of course, um, was a totally different experience because I've got two sons. I've got, a seven, I've got an eight-year-old and I've got a six-month-old child. Um, so both experiences, of course, you can, <laughs> I mean, the, the gap is pretty wide. So um, when I had my first child, that was, you know, that was a totally different experience from the second time round. But both are the most magical moments, I think, in my life because the birth of a child is something so beautiful. Just the fact that you've carried this little precious being in you for nine months and then finally you get to hold them in your arms and you get that first eye-to-eye -eye contact. It's the most precious memory that I hold to, de to date. What I love most about being a mother is that I, I have unconditional love from my children and nobody can ever love you like your children. Not your mother, not your father, not your spouse, not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend. Three things that I'm most passionate about. Um, I would say my job, my career. I've done this for a while now, so this this is this is in me. This is what I know how to do, and I thank God that I was, you know, able to find myself in a career that I'm so passionate about because this is what I always wanted to do. So that would be career. Second thing I'm most passionate about is family, um, especially, and I'm not just talking about family as in me and my immediate space, my extended family, my mother. Um, is my rock, she's my pillar, she's my mentor, she's my go-to person when I need to make a decision. So family is very precious to me, my brothers, my grandparents, people that I grew up with, um, that's, that's, that's a very special place for me. Um, well, I want to give my children a comfortable life. I never want my children to lack for anything. And so I'm constantly thinking of ways to provide for them away from even what it is that I do, my nine to five, I look for ways to provide for my children. And the one thing that I want to achieve after all is said and done is longevity in my brand. What can I do away from what it is that currently that I'm currently known for, which is basically, you know, I'm a news anchor, I'm a media personality, that's what people know me for. But looking forward, I'm looking at ways of um, growing as a brand by myself as Lillian Muli. If I was not in media, I'd probably be a lawyer. Um, and that's something that I juggled with um, in terms of what it is that I wanted to do before I went to media school. I really wanted to get into law. And that's because my father was a lawyer, but he said, you know, Lillian, you're a very emotional person and you, <laughs> you, you're not able to, I don't know, I don't know. I, I think he was basically trying to say that I'm not as far as he was concerned that I'm not cut out for that. But looking at my interactions with people, how I uh, you know, look at situations in life, whether it's professionally or personally, my relationships with my friends, I think that's what I would have done very, very well. And I'm very interested in law up to now. It's probably something that I would consider doing at master's level. 
Um, my most defining moment in my media career was transitioning from my first job where I stayed from 2005 to the year 2010 and then I got a call um, to move to Citizen TV and at the time that I got that call I actually wasn't sure I wanted to be in the media anymore because I, I just had my baby, my firstborn son Josh and I felt uh, you know, I felt like I needed a break. I just felt like this new motherhood thing needed my time in the house, needed my uh, focus um, in terms of, you know, just time spent with the baby. So, and media can be very demanding on your time. So I got a call to join Oral Media Services at the time that I had just had my child. Um, and I think that was a very defining moment for me because I went into a totally new environment. Previously, we were armchair, um, not journalists, but um, armchair news anchors where you're supposed to wear a stiff suit and sit and present the news and not smile and not, uh, you know, you were not supposed to have any banter off your script. I went into this new environment where I was working with serious world class, you know, award winning producers. My chairman and CEO, Washeo Aruro, allowed us to wear shorter dresses, he allowed us to do longer hair, he allowed us to just be ourselves and he said that our products were going to be driven by our personalities, our individual personalities and that was different because I was used to being this very straight jacket, rigid news anchor that was really not supposed to just over smile, not, let me not say smile, but over smile or giggle or chuckle so that was a defining moment for me because I learned a lot. Uh, the most memorable moment of my career I would say let me start with Kofi Olomide and I talk about Kofi Olomide because I was in studio on the day that he kicked um, one of his dancers um, at the airport and I found myself in the awkward position of having to ask him why did you do it <laughs> and I found that awkward because First of all, as a woman, of course, I mean, I was extremely upset about the fact that he did that. And I saw the video, so I was extremely upset about the fact that he did that. But then again, I was in that position where, okay, why are you passing judgment on this guy? First of all, because um, it's wrong, it's wrong, but you're a journalist. So you're supposed to get the story at the end of it, you're supposed to be objective. So that was memorable because he came into studio, but I had interviewed him about a month before and we had this very nice interview. We danced, we were happy. And then he came into studio again and he thought, oh, this is my friend. So it's not going to be a hostile interview. And then I was there asking him, how could you do that? Who does that? So that was memorable because um, he was was shocked and Kenyans obviously lynched him as you know Kenyans on Twitter can be quite vicious Kenyans lynched him and then he was picked up by the CID officers right after the interview so the whole thing looked like a setup being given an opportunity to tell stories that have not been told before I remember interviewing Ida Odinga after her son Fidel died and those are memorable interviews for me because you get to see the person behind you know behind the narrative the the, the 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 narrative that's out there about some of these people is that oh this is the wife of the prime minister this is um you know this is uh, the first lady but she got to um you know reveal a side to her that was so pure that was so real that every other woman whether from Kibera or from Kilalesha or from Karen could relate to, from the low class to the upper middle class to the high class. Um, yes, um, Ida Odinga, um, at the time she lost her son Fidel Odinga, um, she retreated um, to her home in Bondo and was not going to do an interview with anybody for the longest time. And we pursued and pursued and pursued and asked, please, can we do an interview? And sometimes, as the media, we can be insensitive because here's somebody there mourning and you're there chasing them for an interview. Um, but eventually, she did agree to an interview and I went to her home in Bondo and she was gracious. She's a gracious host. She's an amazing lady. And we spent some time together and I remember her sharing and saying that no mother should ever have to bury their child. And for me, that was very powerful um, because she basically shared about how for the first time in her life everything ceased to matter and you know Ida has always been on the right hand side of of her husband but this time around she said no yeah one of the most memorable ones as well Lupita Nyong'o after her her Oscar 
um, and you know and this is us in New York um, and, and she's there and she's hanging out with us and this is Lupita right after an Oscar and she's just as humble as they come she's got these publicists and she's got like a an entire building you know dedicated to just her as a brand and I'm there and I'm supposed to interview her and that was amazing that was an amazing opportunity for me um, because I got to talk to her right after that huge moment for her and you know we came and we told the story back home and she spoke in Luo and she greeted the people back home it was huge it was a great opportunity to be in NYC but an even bigger opportunity to talk to talk to Lupita um, well what people do not know about me is that I was an introvert for a long time I was just that girl that just wanted to be left alone I just wanted to be by myself a lot of the time or with my very close people and then I don't know I just woke up one day and I said Lillian the media cannot define you 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 have a life away from your job manage what it is that you do away from work manage um, you know the company that you keep but please live your life so for the longest time I was this introvert and I hated it because I knew that I wanted to be out there I knew that I wanted to turn up for functions I knew that I wanted to just go out with the girls dancing but I hated the eyes I hated the fact that people were constantly looking at me and then one time my you know one, one of my friends asked me Lillian but you know you might be in this career until you're like 40 or 45 or 50 and then you're gonna look back and then you're gonna start being that wild 50 year old that everybody sees everywhere misbehaving so I just snapped out of it and what I'm doing now is just living my life like unapologetically um, yeah Slim Possible was um, the brainchild of the executive producer that's Washer Aroro and it's because when I was poached we we'll use that word in the media to join Royal Media in the year 2010 I had lost so much weight I, I weighed 56 kilos at the time um, after having my baby I didn't look nice by the way but everybody was like how did you do this after after having a baby what a lot of people didn't know was that um, the birth of my first child um, took a toll on me emotionally mentally um, so I went through an episode of postnatal depression and I just couldn't eat I couldn't I just couldn't function it was it was it was hard for me but when I finally got over that um, I got into this serious um, you know healthy eating program and I really watched what I ate I worked out religiously so when I joined Citizen TV my boss looked at me and he said hold up how old is your baby and I said my baby is about six months old and he said so how are you this tiny and I said well I told him about you know the depression and then I told him about um, just my deliberate deliberate um, decision to not put on weight because that comes also with that state of mind where you're just like I have to look a certain way and then he said okay fine then you're the person I've been looking for and Slim Possible was born and we combined ideas and it was a huge success and 10 seasons later um, you know I, I was proud to have been the host of of course it was a lot of pressure because as women in the when we have different seasons in our lives you can't always be tiny highlights from Slim Possible there are many um, uh, but um, we once um, had a season that had both men and women it was not as successful as the other seasons and I don't know why but I think men generally and, and I mean the lot that we had was very committed to, to coming on the show and and was very you know religious at the gym but we had issues with the men and I think one of the highlights was the fact that somebody got proposed to um, on, on, on a season finale that was a huge moment what's next for Lillian Muli is uh, a lot of big things big big things and I really really steam, see my star rising I, I have a very good feeling about the future because I'm self-aware now and I'm not second-guessing myself anymore and I'm not afraid to fail I failed before I'm not proud of a lot of things I've done but I am so aware of who I am now that I've got projects lined up that are aligned to that growth and I'm willing to seek help I'm willing to seek support from people who will walk with me in this journey as I and I spoke about 
the Lillian Muli brand, Lillian Muli the brand. That's what's next for me. My recent outburst. I know everybody knows about it. Um, I'm, I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud that I had an outburst that got Kenya talking about me and I'm sure even diaspora. I think sometimes I underestimate my brand and um, I'm very much aware of the power of social media, especially now, and how just any little thing that you put out there will be misconstrued. It will be, people will just take what it is that you give them and run with it. So, as a word of caution to all upcoming brands or even women in general, don't even have to be a brand. Anytime you're put in a position that you're extremely angry or emotional or vulnerable, I learned and I've learned after this to count at least to 100 because by the time you get to 25, you'll have calmed down. Because some of the things you put out there, you can't take back. I'm not proud of it. Um, it was a weak moment for me. It was a very weak moment for me. But I made peace with the fact that it happened and um, I'm choosing to move on from, from, from there and, and I can't act like it didn't happen because obviously something really hurt me that made me react that way. I'm not going to get into it, but it's not something that I'm proud of and if I could take it back, I would. But because I can't take it back, I have to make peace with myself and make peace with the affected person or persons because, you know, some of these things affect you know, it's not just about you. There's you and the other person, but there's also your family, there's the person's family, there's a lot of people, there's children, there's a lot of people involved. And like I told you, I'm an emotional being, so I'm learning to count at least to 100. I told you, you'll not even get to 25. <laughs> you'll be fine. So, you know, breathe in, relax. Don't be angry, don't react. Some of these things you can't take back. And when they have to do with people that you love, you don't want to find yourself in that position. So that's, what, yeah, that, I just wanted to put that out there because that was one of the, you know, those oops moments, those ones that you're just like, oh my God, I'm, I'm not proud of it, but I made peace with myself and I hope that the affected persons can make peace with it as well and peace with me um, eventually because people forget and this will soon be forgotten. Thanks for watching. That's the other side of me at the Karen Country Lodge. So that's a wrap guys i hope you got to know me a little bit better and i hope you enjoyed our interview <laughs> tell me what to say <laughs> thank thanks you for watching thanks for watching that's the other side of me at the current country lodge <laughs> i'm a content producer and i love our life